I was just work, just a normal week working with uh, quite a few deer and um, came home and um, the next morning I woke up and I was pretty crook and um, it came on quite fast. I was lucky that I got the antibiotics in that first sort of 24 hours of having, catching the disease and, and it, it sort of, you know, I was able to recover quite quickly. And I know from um, personal experiences of friends that have spent um, um, you know, two or three weeks in bed uh, thinking that they've got a real bad case of the flu and when they are actually got lepto. And I must say that of all the, uh, the conditions that farmers and meat workers and stock truck drivers get, this is the one that really uh, causes great concern because it's, uh, it's oftentimes very insidious, slow onset and can absolutely cause havoc in people's lives. Hello, I'm Ian Johnston. Like so many New Zealanders of my generation, I was brought up on a farm, in my case, a small mixed dairy farm in South Auckland. And the topic of leptospirosis still stirs vivid memories for me. My father contracted lepto from calves in the mid 1950s, which put him off work for a couple of months. Those days, it wasn't listed as a disease covered by his insurance, so no financial support was available. A major blow for a one-man farmer. Mike and John have told you how lepto can make you feel really crook and affect your farm and your family. We've made this series because we want to give you information you can use to protect yourself, your families, workers and livestock from this disease. This first episode in the series is to introduce you to the disease. The later episodes go into more detail on topics such as vaccination, how lepto can affect your livestock and how it can affect you. Lepto is a bacterium and our sheep, cattle, pigs and deer carry the bug and shed it in their urine. Rats, mice, possums, hedgehogs, wild pigs and goats can also carry it, as can our dogs. People and animals catch lepto from contact with an infected animal's urine. So you can catch it when working with animals, especially if you are near the back end, like when milking, but also when shearing sheep or when butchering especially if you have cuts or urine splashes onto your lips or in your eyes. It doesn't need to be a direct contact though. There is a strain or serovar of lepto called balum that's shed by rats and mice and we see this more and more in farmers, probably associated with handling animal feed that a rodent has urinated on. Animals spread it to other animals directly through mating, urine contact, or through standing water in pasture, say after flooding. The trouble with lepto is that infected animals often do not look sick. Each serovar or strain of lepto is associated with a maintenance mammal host. We tend to call lepto by its serovar name, Hajo, Balam, or Pomona for example. Usually there is little disease in the maintenance host and the bug sets up in the kidneys. Those hosts act as reservoirs and can be a source of infection for other non-maintenance host species, including humans. It can cause kidney infections, abortions and death. And this tends to happen when infection occurs in a non-maintenance host. Infection of animals with a lepto can also mean they don't grow or breed as well as they should. This can happen both with host adapted and non-host adapted serovars. There is more detail about this in a later episode of this series. In New Zealand, farmers and meat workers are most at risk from this disease. There are around 100 notified cases per year. These figures show only the cases that have been notified. And these are usually severely ill people, with half of these going to hospital. Many more people than this become sick with flu-like symptoms, but do not get to the doctor. You can help protect yourself, your workers and your families against lepto by good personal hygiene wearing protective gear, controlling rodents, and vaccinating your animals. That's our introduction to lepto. We'll be talking more about the disease in humans and how to protect yourself in episodes two and six. Remember to contact us if there are still questions you have after watching this, or if anything is not clear, we'd love to hear from you.